So, basics of throwing a pot. Start off with an adequate sized piece of clay to make the item that you want to make. Throw it down onto the wheel. It doesn't have to be central, but the closer to the centre, the easier it makes the rest of it as we go on. Nice and firmly. And then just usher it with your hands to make sure that it's as close to the middle as we can do and it's nicely stuck onto the wheel. Okay. Turn the wheel on. Now I don't like to throw too much water on, I like to just dip my hands in the water. And what we're going to do now is we're going to centre the clay. Now, centering the clay means that we need to stop it from moving, oscillating, take all the lumps and bumps out and make it ready to make a pot. If we don't do that, then your pot will be wobbly by the end. So it's really, really important. Probably the most important thing about making a pot, to be honest. Okay, so all I'm doing now is I'm just bringing it up. Just as it's a big piece of clay. And then pushing it back down. I'm not aiming for any shape or anything like that at this moment. Now, to check if something's centered, by holding something flat along the side, I don't know if you can see that from there, but the clay is wobbling side to side. It's just touching my finger. So I know that's not quite right yet. So I need to go a little bit further. The bigger the piece of clay, the harder it is to center. Just a touch further. Okay. Once you think it's centered, it's really important as well not to jerk your hands away. You should take them away quite slowly. If you go like that, you might knock it, which again just knocks it back off center. The next thing we need to do now is we need to put a hole in the middle. A lot of potters use two fingers or one thumb, it's really whatever's more comfortable for you. Because my wheel's quite small, I like to use my thumb. Being careful not to hit the bottom of the pot, otherwise your, your items will leak through the bottom. And then we're going to widen that hole that we've made by stretching the clay outwards. Simply pulling your thumb out towards the right. Enough to get your fingers inside at this point for me. Take a little bit more out the bottom. Better to be over cautious than under cautious. Okay. Now what we're going to do is the first lift and if you notice, my hand is very similar as though I'm going to try and tear the pot off. But obviously we don't want to be anywhere near as, as firm with the clay as that. We need to be quite gentle. I'm just squeezing my fingers towards my palm very gently, whilst lifting my hand very slowly upwards. The slower the wheel is spinning, the slower the hand movement should be. So as you can see, it's lifted upwards a little bit there. A lot of people for the second lift do something called a knuckle lift and that just simply means putting your knuckle into the bottom of the pot. And lifting again. I'm 
we'll keep doing these lifts till we get to the height that we want it to be. Give me an idea of the height that I want there. Which looks all nice and straight and smooth at the side. Okay. So it's the basics of the pot finished. Uh, what we need to do now is just trim a bit of the wasted clay away from the bottom. So this is just a basic trimming tool. And the first part that we do, just hold it flat against the wheel head and put that into the bottom. Make a channel. We need that channel no matter what pot you make so as we can pull the wire through pulling a layer of water which I'll show you at the very end but otherwise it won't come off the wheel it'll stick to it at the end. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and make this rounded belly define a little bit more by taking some of this wasted clay at the bottom away. Now the wasted clay acts a bit like making a pyramid so obviously the clay at the bottom gives more strength to a tall, tall item that you're making. Finish off by running the sponge. Sometimes you can end up with a very slightly wobbly top, as I have this time. Bit of a cheap way of sorting that out, to be honest, but. Uh, no one would ever know. It also neatens up the top quite a bit. Okay. So I'm quite happy with that. Just gonna just make sure that that channel's still there in the bottom. Makes a lovely squeaky noise. Turn the wheel off. Try and keep your working area clean if you can do. Saves doing more of it later on. Okay, so to take the pot off, I need to make sure there's no water inside now. Because I haven't used much water, there's nothing really to take out. If you did have a, a pool of water, you would use a sponge on a stick, which is one of these. And ideally, while it's still spinning, just put it into the bottom wring out the water until you've got all the water out. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take it off. So put water all the way around the wheel head. Don't be too sparing, get plenty on. And then using your wire, now most potters use metal wires. 
I use fishing wire because we have a lot of children coming through. It's just a safer way of doing it for me. So we pull that through once, keeping your thumbs nice and firmly down on the bottom of the wheel. Once you're going to pull it through again, you want to do that until you feel the pot starting to slip towards you a little bit. So I'm going to do that once more. I don't know if you could see that, but it started to move a little bit, so I know it's ready to come off. Using my left hand, as close to the base as I can, I don't want to put too many marks on my pot, slide it off of the wheel onto my hand, and from my hand onto the piece of wood. And that's it. Finished pot.